How's it going guys, it's K Cars, and yes, you did read the title right. My Dodge Challenger's catback was stolen, but luckily it was recovered. So in this video, I wanted to give you guys the full story, all the details of what happened to the car, how it was stolen, how it was found, and what actually happened while the criminal had the car, as well as show you guys all the damage that was done to it. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Hey guys, so before we get into the full story here, I didn't want to let you guys know that I was going back and forth deciding whether or not I wanted to actually post this video or not. But in the end, I figured it would be a pretty interesting story for me to tell and you guys to watch. I also thought it would be a pretty good eye-opener for people who have not gotten their vehicle stolen yet. And, you know, even if you are going through all the anti-theft and security measures, you know, this can pretty much happen to anybody. So it was definitely an eye-opener to me, and I just wanted to make it an eye-opener to you guys as well, that this literally can happen to anybody, no matter what kind of security measures you have, what kind of anti-theft devices you guys have as well. It all started when I parked this car in a public parking garage, and I left it there overnight. And by no means am I saying that this whole thing was my fault, because I was the one who parked in a public parking garage overnight. I should have known better. I'm not saying that. You know, I wasn't the only car parked in that public parking garage overnight. So, you know, I figured it would be fine. Now, a car like this definitely does attract a good amount of attention. There definitely is a lot of risk associated with that. I left the car there, let's just say Saturday afternoon. Let's just call it 3 p.m. I left the car there at 3 p.m., you know, overnight. So the next day on Sunday evening, I went back down there and it was completely gone. So my first thought that I actually thought in my head was that, you know, it might have just gotten towed because, you know, it is a public parking garage. They do have towing enforcement. But at the same time, I did realize, you know, I paid for my parking. I, you know, did everything that I was supposed to do. And it wasn't the first time that I parked in that parking garage either. And I've never had issues with towing or anything like that. So, you know, I kind of figured I was hoping that it just got towed, but, you know, then I walked up closer and saw a bunch of broken glass on the parking spot where I left it. I just kind of realized that, you know, this thing definitely didn't get towed. It was stolen for sure. So right over here is the parking spot that the car was stolen from. As you guys can see, all the broken glass right here on the ground. you guys all that right there so that's pretty much the first thing that i saw whenever i walked up to the parking spot after i saw that it wasn't there towing company definitely would not break the window to tow a car that's just not what they do so i kind of ruled that idea out and kind of confirmed that it definitely was stolen before anybody asks all the windows were closed everything was locked both doors and trunk were locked uh, I didn't have any kind of valuables in the car and I was in possession of both key fobs So the only way they could have gotten in the car was by you know smashing a window I must have smashed the passenger side window because the glass was only on the passenger side on the floor or Like on the ground in the parking spot There weren't any kind of like weapons or anything left behind no kind of like hammers or anything that we could use to Identify what they used to actually smash the window but I do know they did smash the window. This parking garage also is supposed to have 24 seven security that you know actually patrols the garage and everything. Uh, you know, they have security cameras and everything. These criminals must have actually planned this whole thing out very well to actually avoid being caught. And the car alarm had to have gone off, but you know, I'm assuming they probably just might have unplugged the battery to stop that. But then whenever I started the car, you guys know how loud this car is. It's insanely loud. One of the loudest cars I've ever heard. <laughs> So whenever they started the car up, it had to draw some kind of attention. But I'm assuming they probably did it in the middle of the night. So, you know, maybe nobody actually cared enough to, you know, look at what was going on. But with a car like this, in this kind of situation, they must have actually planned everything out very carefully to actually, you know, go through with this crime. How they actually got the car started is beyond me. I have no clue how they did it. But I have been hearing that some criminals use this, like, relay box that if they can pick up the signal from your key fob, they can actually start the car. But, you know, my key fob was nowhere near the car, so I kind of ruled that idea out. So I really have no clue how they started this car. Whenever I got the car back, the fuse box was actually open in the back. I'll show you guys all that as well. I'll show you all the damage in the car later on in the video. But the fuse box was open and the little, like, lid that opens up the fuse box, that was kind of, like, open as well. So they must have been doing something back there. I don't know if they used the fuse box to start the car or if they were just trying to disconnect the battery because the battery is in the trunk. So I'm thinking maybe once the alarm went off, they just disconnected the battery and that's why they had to access the fuse box panel. So I'm not really sure what they did. After that, I called the police, of course, and filed a police report. The police officer came. I showed him the spot that I parked in. He took a bunch of pictures of the glass and everything. 
Uh, I told him a bunch of information, everything that he needed. And now is when the waiting game starts. So if you guys have ever had your car stolen, you guys know how stressful this can kind of be, how much anxiety you can get from this stuff. Um, you know, when you're just waiting to hear back from the police, you really don't know what's going to happen. So that's kind of where I was at that point. It was just the waiting game. But after I filed the police report, I, you know, immediately started looking on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace to see if anybody was trying to sell this car online or sell any kind of parts off of this car. So I kept doing that, you know, every day I was looking on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist just to make sure none of that was happening. And I couldn't find a single thing for a few days. But along with that, I also did go to the security office of the parking garage that I was in to see if I could review the security camera footage on my own to at least be able to, you know, maybe get some more information like what time they stole the car, maybe see if there was another car with them that I could try to look at the license plate and, you know, just provide any kind of information to the police to make their investigation go a little bit faster and help them out as much as I can. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to actually do any of that because they need to have that request from the police instead of, you know, just a random guy like me, which is completely understandable, I guess. But the police wasn't actually able to start the investigation for a while, which is why I wanted to kind of give them more information and give them a head start once they did actually start the investigation. I do completely understand that there are definitely much more higher priority crime cases that the police has to investigate over a stolen vehicle i completely understand that so you know, i'm not really complaining about that i also understand that they are pretty short staffed right now from what i've been hearing so all that is understandable but you know i just wanted to help out as much as i could a few days went by i kept looking on facebook marketplace and craigslist to see if anybody was trying to sell the car or sell any parts off of the car couldn't find anything but then after about three days at night I received a phone call from a police officer who told me the car has been recovered now i was extremely excited obviously and i thought it was kind of cool that you know the police department that i reported the car to didn't even start their investigation but a separate police department actually found the car i found the car kind of by accident which is i feel like i was extremely lucky for that but basically the car was found 30 miles away from where it was stolen from and i feel like 30 miles isn't really a uh, super far distance that a criminal would go if they were stealing a car at least that's what i would think i don't really know you know what they wanted to do with the car what their intentions were at all but yeah it was found 30 miles away from where it was stolen and you know so the police officer wasn't able to give me any kind of details because he wasn't the one who actually found it he just went over to verify that this car was in fact the car that was stolen took all the fingerprints and took down all the inventory of what was inside the car and funny enough there was actually a car seat in the car i did not have a car seat or literally anything in the car when it was stolen so i find it extremely weird that whoever took the car put a car seat in here so it makes me wonder what was actually like going on like with whoever stole the car they did all that and then they told me that i can pick the car up whenever i wanted to so i went down the next day to pick the car up from the towing company and you know since the officer wasn't able to tell me you know what actually happened how they found it i asked the towing company how it was found and they pretty much told me that it was parked outside of an apartment building in a reserved parking spot but it didn't have a parking permit so the car got towed and then i guess maybe by looking up the vin number or something like that the towing company figured out that it was stolen so at that point they called the police department for them to come out and do whatever they need to do verify that it was in fact the car that i reported stolen and do whatever they had to do so very lucky for that because like i said the police were not even searching for it at the time and it kind of just you know like i said just very lucky that whoever called the towing company to, to get this car towed that's the person who actually found the car so like i said very lucky that that actually happened the way it did because if it hadn't been found that way then who knows you know where the car would have ended up Before i looked at the car it had a fake license plate so whoever took the car was smart enough to actually take off my license plate like the actual real license plate and they put on a fake temporary license plate for the car now on the license plate they did get everything right except for the vin number so i'm thinking they probably just put a fake vin number on there just whoever looks at that license plate looks at the vin number it won't show up as stolen unless they look at the actual like permanent vin number that's like underneath the windshield here so i think that's probably the reason why they wanted to put a fake vin number on the fake license plate just so they wouldn't get caught and just so it wouldn't look suspicious at all now, one thing I also did want to mention is that I told you guys the passenger side window was completely smashed because I did find a bunch of broken glass on the parking spot and on the inside of the car. 
Now, whenever I actually went up to the car, whenever I picked it up, the passenger side window was completely intact and I will show you guys everything. But I guess they smashed the window and then got it replaced right away just so I guess maybe they wouldn't look too suspicious driving around in a smashed window. But yeah, that's kind of good for me because I don't have to pay to get a new window, I guess. So that's already done. And one thing that's weird though is that the driver's side window is tinted and now the passenger side window looks like a fishbowl now because it's not tinted at all. Um, but yeah, so I have two windows. Whoever took the car already replaced my passenger side window. It's just not tinted, so it's different from the driver's side. It's kind of weird, but at the same time, I do understand that it probably would look a little bit suspicious driving around in a smashed out window in a Dodge Challenger with a you know fake license plate and all that. But then also something else that I noticed whenever I got the car back is that this whole dash panel was loose. And as you can see here, it still is pretty loose. Like I can't really connect it. It seems like the whole like clip underneath here is just broken off. So yeah, you can see this whole thing is still pretty loose. Um, it doesn't really like clip back into place at all, even if I, you know, press it on here pretty hard. I think the clip underneath here is just broken off. So I'm really not sure what they were doing underneath the dash. And also this panel below the steering wheel was also pretty loose. So this little panel uh, right here, I'm not really sure what they were doing under there but it definitely was loose as well whenever i got the car back so that little panel down below the steering wheel here along with this whole dash piece these things were both loose so i don't know if maybe they were just trying to tear the car apart to look and see if there was a tracker on the car just to make sure they weren't being tracked by their location or what they were doing. I don't know if they did something with the wires underneath here to start the car or if they did something with the fuses in the rear. But, you know, I really don't know how they got the car started, but I do know that they got inside the car by smashing the passenger side window. So luckily there wasn't too much damage done to the car, but like I said, there was some damage. Now the damage that happened was this dent here on the passenger side fender. Now it's nothing crazy, but you can definitely notice it. Like see right there you can see like how uh, I guess like concave it is right there it's probably not showing up too well on camera but you can see what actually happened here you've got a different angle of what that looks like so there you can see right there and you can see right here that I think this is just like paint that got scratched onto the car here and then right here next to the wheel well that's where the paint actually got scratched off. So I'm thinking what happened and how this happened is that whenever they were backing out of the parking garage, there's a huge column on the passenger side. So I'm thinking whoever was backing this car out, they just turned without even looking at the column or without even noticing that they were about to crash into it. They were just in such a rush to drive the car out that they forgot, you know, how to drive basically. So I wanted to show this to you guys right over here. You can see this is the red paint from the car. So I'm pretty sure this is where they actually hit the column that I was talking about in the video. And right over here, you can see the tire mark. So pretty sure whenever they were just reversing out of the spot, they just weren't even aware that this whole column was here. Just hit it right over here. So it's most likely how that dent got in there. That's one noticeable piece of damage that I saw after I picked the car up. And then I also did tell you guys that the passenger side window was smashed open. And this is the new window that I have on the car right now. So you can see it definitely is not the like Dodge brand, I guess. Let's see if I can see right there. Probably can't really see the logo there, but it's just like a general, I guess like car window. Not really sure what you would call that, but here on the driver's side, this is the actual stock window that came on the car and it actually has like a Mopar logo and everything. So not sure how well you guys will be able to notice this on camera, but here you can see the driver's side window is tinted. But if we look at the passenger side, you can kind of see it's a lot more clear. It kind of just gives it that fishbowl look on the passenger side here. So as I mentioned, the criminal got me a brand new window, luckily, so I didn't have to worry about replacing that on my own. And then on the inside here is where you can see all the broken glass. Now I'm thinking that they already cleaned out a big part of it because it's not like you know, you can definitely notice that there's broken glass, but it's not like covered in broken glass. Starting off here, let me show you guys what it looks like in the rear. So there, right behind the passenger seat, you can see all that broken glass right there. Some on the rear seats right there as well. Right there. So 
the most amount of broken glass is right over here behind the passenger side seat see some more right there a little bit on the seat right there uh, there's a little bit of shards on the dash not sure if you can see that on camera here but right there some in the cup holder some on the driver's seat as well some on the driver's floor and right here these two little circles these are actually from the license plate frame that I had on the car so they stole my Mopar and no car license plate frame that I had on the car you guys probably remember that but I guess they were nice enough to leave these little like circles that cover up the screws for that and they left me three screws in the cup holder here I'm really not sure what these are from uh, it's kind of hard to tell I don't think these are from the license plate but yeah not really sure what these would be from at all. I also did notice that it is pretty difficult to slide the seat forward and backwards. So I'm guessing there's just a bunch of broken glass like on the rails that the seat slides on. Because if I actually try to move the seat right now, you guys will be able to hear all the broken glass kind of like crumbling in the seat rails. The seat's kind of just like flying out of there. Yeah, now it's like stuck. So that's kind of unfortunate that you know there's a bunch of you know just broken glass sitting inside the seat rails right there not sure how well you guys could see that on camera but yeah I mean there's just just shards of glass all over the interior now and when it comes to any more interior damage the only thing that I could really notice is just like these little tears I guess in the seat now they're really not too noticeable but like right there for example that was not there and then there's some more tears right over here Assuming that might just be like from whenever the glass hit it maybe or whenever maybe they were kind of climbing over the passenger side seat Maybe they put a tear in there a bunch of stains on the seat here. So Right there, but yeah, I'm actually really surprised that it's not in a worse condition than you know I was expecting it to be much worse whenever I picked it up. So Yeah, I mean it's really it is better than I was expecting, to be honest. And as for the trunk here, whenever I got the car back and I was looking it over, I noticed that this little flap here was kind of like open and loose a little bit. And this is, of course, where the battery in the fuse box is. So, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, what I'm thinking is that whenever the car alarm went off, they probably just tried to disconnect the battery to make the alarm stop. But I also did notice that the fuse box here was loose. So they had to have been doing something in the fuse box here. I don't know if maybe they just used the fuse box to start the car. I really don't know if that would work, but they definitely were doing something in the fuse box. So it's kind of hard to say what was actually going on back here, but you know, they definitely were doing something in there. That's pretty much the extent of the damage that happened to this car while it was stolen. You know, as I mentioned, just the passenger side window was smashed and obviously that also got replaced by the criminal. So pretty lucky for that. I don't have to worry about replacing that on my own. So of course, along with the smashed passenger window, there's a bunch of broken glass on the inside that I'm gonna have to get cleaned out. So definitely gonna do that sometime here soon. And then obviously the dent on the passenger side fender is probably the worst piece of damage that is on this car right now because you know it's extremely noticeable in my opinion you can see that huge dent right there on the passenger side fender so yeah not really sure but that's probably the worst piece of damage and then like i said the interior can just be vacuumed out it shouldn't be too difficult i can just do a pretty detailed inside detail job so should be able to clean that up pretty well here and then obviously for the passenger side seat it doesn't really like go back and forth it doesn't really slide very easily hopefully i'll be able to vacuum up all those small shards of glass that are in the way and hopefully get that working and then something else that i do want to mention is that the passenger side window isn't aligned very well i guess that's how i would say it but not really sure what actually goes into replacing a window here but what i've noticed is that anytime i roll the window down it kind of has like this little bump sound or like a clicking noise whenever it goes down kind of in the middle and i can demonstrate that to you guys right now yeah there it was so really nothing too serious but you know it definitely is there so nothing that i'm too worried about you know it can probably be fixed if i put like a mopar brand window in here but you know probably not even worth the effort to be honest for something like this it's not really a big deal at all something else that i wanted to mention is that whenever i picked the car up 
the gas was actually more full than what I left it with. So, you know, with gas prices these days, I am pretty thankful that the criminal gave me some free gas to use, uh, you know probably honestly made up for the towing fee that i had to pay for this they probably did fill it up with 87 which is you know it's these kind of cars require 93 and i've noticed that it does kind of smell a little bit worse i'm not sure if you know that's the effect of using a lower grade octane fuel that you're supposed to use but that is one thing that i've noticed so i am assuming that they did put 87 in the car so you know probably not a huge deal but i'll probably just run the car all the way to empty then fill it back up with 93 and hopefully it should be just fine after that going back to the whole interior dash panel here that's loose i did try to take this whole thing apart to see if i could see anything unusual but i'm really honestly not too sure what to look for um, i did get it off probably most of the way and i took this whole air vent out as well I didn't really see anything that looked too unusual so you know like i said in the beginning of the video i was kind of just thinking that maybe they were searching for a tracker like a car tracker to make sure that they were not being tracked and you know i took this out just to make sure that they did not put a tracker in here i didn't see anything like i said didn't see anything unusual that you know looked weird under here or anything like that uh same thing with under the steering wheel panel here i took that apart as well didn't really see anything unusual there so guys i think that's pretty much going to do for this video like i said very thankful that i was able to get the car back in the condition that it's in right now i was definitely expecting it to be damaged a lot worse than what it is uh so you know very lucky that it was actually found the way it was because who knows where it would have ended up or what would have happened to the car if they hadn't parked it in a reserved parking spot and it wasn't towed i really don't know their intentions of why they took the car if they were going to try to commit another crime with the car or if they were just going to try to sell it for parts really hard to say what their intentions would have been but like i mentioned in the beginning of the video i really hope you guys found this video interesting and kind of took it as a little bit of an eye opener because like i said this can literally happen to anybody no matter what kind of anti-theft devices you have what kind of security measures you have taken with your car you know this can pretty much happen to anybody like i said i never thought it was going to happen to me but it did so hopefully this kind of thing never happens again hopefully it never happens to any of you guys but thank you guys for watching again if you have any questions or comments make sure to leave those down in the comment section below and if you guys have any video suggestions for videos you would like to see in the future make sure to also drop those down in the comment section below and if you guys like this video or found it entertaining make sure to like comment and subscribe and as always thanks for watching